Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider the graph of a function of two variables. The setup is like this. You have a function f, and by function, I mean real-valued function. So the function output is just one variable, and the inputs are two variables. So total, you have three variables in the picture, right? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Okay, and the domain is some subset of R2. So R2 is just coordinated by x and y. Okay, and the domain need not be all of R2, it's just some points in R2. And now the graph of f is the subset of R3 with coordinates x, y, z. So these x and y are just the same x and y which cover uh, the domain of f. And the z is a new thing. Okay, and it's given by a certain equation. Now what do you think the equation should be? z equals what? f x y f of x comma y great so that's the definition of the graph now another way of saying this is it's the set of points x y f x comma y so it's points where the x coordinate is x the y coordinate is y and the z coordinate is f x comma y where x comma y live where in r by r well r x r. x comma y will live in r2 but not everything in r2 because we just want to look at the situation where they're in the domain so x comma y are in the subset of r2 where the function is defined right so that's what domain what's the domain what letter did i use for that d no i already used a letter oh S. <laughs> I mean, you could call it D if you want, but I already called it S. So I got there first. Okay, so okay, so what does this mean pictorially? So let's let's just think about this a bit. Cannot go into too much detail, but let's just try to think about this a bit. Okay, so now usually when you have graph of a function of one variable which may have been usual for you up till now, you used one axis for the input variable and one axis for the output variable. So the entire graph came in a plane. Mm -hmm. Now you have a single variable output function of two variable inputs. Mm -hmm. So you have how many total variables in the picture? Three. Three. And how do you depict them? Well, you need three axes to depict all of them, right? That's why the graph is subset of R3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the plane just to denote the x and y. So points in this plane represent what? They just represent possible points in the domain. Mm -hmm. Now, not everything in the plane is in the domain, because the domain need not be all of R2. But in general, if I take a point here, what I really mean is just an input to the function. To depict the graph of the function, I need to take a third axis. Okay, so the third axis would be the z-axis, which would be going straight. This coming straight up at you, mm -hmm. straight up at the camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how does the graph look? Well, for every point here, so if x0, y0 is a point here in the domain, then there's going to be exactly one point in this vertical line. Okay, the vertical line is given by the equation x equals x0 and y equals y0. Mm -hmm. And the, where will that point be? What point on this vertical line will will this thing be? Uh, x0, y0, x0, y0, f. Of x yeah, so the, the z coordinate of the point where you'll actually is this am I, is my fingers above this point? Yeah. Okay, so the, the z coordinate will be exactly the, the, the value of f at this point. Okay, uh -huh. so for every point in the domain here, you'll get one point in that line which is parallel to the z axis. You get one point on the graph which is in that line. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what will the graph look like pictorially? If the function is nice enough, then the graph looks like a surface. So, if f is nice enough, a nice, I mean something like, well, I don't, I don't want to be too precise because I haven't really defined surface either. But if it's re differentiable enough times and all, then uh, so it will be what you think of as a surface. And the graph of f is a 
surface. Okay, now for instance, if the function is a constant function, then what will the graph look like? Function is a constant function, it will just be a plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, whose height is given by the z value. Now, if z is negative, then you'll actually be going in the other direction, in downward. Okay, right. Okay, 